Yes, we will. Alrighty, we are live. Live. <laughs> Alrighty. So today's session, how to stop losing commissions from the I want to what? Think it over. I want to think it over. Now, I chose this one as our first topic in a series of specific objections that you get on a regular basis on how to handle them. And uh, next week, we're going to take a break in the objection handling series, and we're actually going to have a, you're going to see a live uh, presentation of, on a listing appointment. And I'm going to take a break in between and show you um, the different uh, things that are going, uh, the reasons why I'm doing what I'm doing, but I'll talk about that a little later. Um, those of you who um, gave a testimonial last week, uh, raise your hand if you would please. Okay. Yeah, you wrote the oh, written wrote testimony, it, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. You remember I told you the person who had the best testimony was going to get a scratch ticket? Well, all the testimonies were so great, I decided to give each of you a scratch ticket. Oh, okay. nice. Oh, you're very welcome. Nice. Thank you for your, your, Thank you. your kind words. And so what I did is I, I have the scratch tickets here, so at the end of the session, please uh, come on up and get your scratch ticket. You can pick your own, and hopefully it'll be a... Do we have to split one. the... Uh, Winning. No, you get, to keep them. you get to keep them all yourself. Absolutely. So, um, so here's the scoop. You ready? This couple, oh, the joke first, okay. Uh, this couple, they're driving to Western Mass, and the husband turns to the wife and he says, Oh, look, there's a sign there for Holyoke. And she said, It's not pronounced Holyoke, it's pronounced Holyoke. Did I pronounce it? Pretty good. Okay. All right. I was close. Oh, yeah. So and so they go back and forth. They're arguing back and forth, back and forth. Finally, he says, "You know what? I'm going to end this argument right here and now. We're going to we're going to get off the uh, off the highway. We're going to go into one of these restaurants I see on the side of the road, and we're going to ask them just exactly how they pronounce this place." So he walks into the restaurant. He says, "Excuse me. My wife and I have been arguing back and forth." about how you pronounce this place that we're in right now. He didn't want to pronounce it because he didn't want to give it away. And he said, could you please tell us, how do you pronounce this place that we're in right now? And she looked at him and she said, Burger King. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway. That's cute. And, you know, and so sometimes I like that joke as it applies. And, uh, you know, because, you know, we need to, we say certain things in a certain way. And we can get a certain response from people. So sometimes it's not always what you say, it's how you say it as well. Would you agree? Yeah. yeah. Okay. For instance, how you say the name of that town, you could instantly tell whether or not the person was from that town. Right. Just like Gloucester or Medford. Medford. Or, <laughs> or Wista. Medford. Right? Yeah. Medford, you know. Amherst. Um, yeah, Leicester, Amherst. Amherst, you know. So you can tell. You know, it's not just what you say, it's how you say it is very important. So today, um, we're going to focus on, uh, in, in, in these next few sessions, we're really going to focus on learning a skill. What, what I mean, gang, is that you're going to go to work a little more than you're used to working. Usually, I'm the one doing all the work, but I'm going to ask you to do some work, too. And uh, we are going to do some role-playing, but here's the benefit of the role-playing. And sometimes, when I mention role-playing, to this group, everyone really seems to be fine with it. In a typical average group of people, they're always like, oh, God, I didn't know we were going to do any role-playing. I would have never showed up if I had role-playing. You know? <laughs> but you folks are a fun group, and I, I appreciate your attitude and your, and your commitment to your business. I mean, that's why you're here. And so if you can come to a session and then literally walk away with a skill, which is more than just being aware of what you need to learn, which is what I teach you most of the time, <laughs> right? That's huge, isn't it? I mean, to be able to make a significant change to walk with a skill, and I promise you, you will be able to do that today. We're going to use a specific technique of role playing that I've never introduced to you before, and uh, I know you're going to get a lot out of it. It's going to be fun, too, okay? So, let's stop at the top of the page. Uh, let's start. Let's start at the top of the page. Stop losing commissions from I want to think it over. When a prospect says, I want to think it over, A, tell them they can't. B, find out what they want to think over, or C, find out how long they want to think it over. B. B. B is correct. When a prospect wants to think it over, and you leave without a decision, they are really laughing at you behind your back, <laughs> not qualified prospects, or talking about what concerns them. C is correct. B. Yes. 
They're probably lost too. <laughs> and they're probably they're probably all of the above, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a thinking over is usually caused by unanswered questions. True or false? True. True. That is correct. A condition is a reason why a prospect can't make a decision. Conditions should be discovered in the qualifying step. True or false? True. 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 Right. And Andre, you and I talked about that yesterday, actually, right? Yeah. Um, you know, like, for instance, Andre and I were role-playing yesterday, and he comes up with an objection, and I thought, to my, and I started to handle it, and I thought to myself, wait a minute. I would have found out the answer to that objection when I was pre-qualifying before I went on the appointment. So that's not an appointment, that's not an objection that you would get because you'd have pre-qualified them, uh, you know, prior to going on the appointment. Number one, always get a decision. A decision is a yes or a no, a yes, no, or maybe, or C, yes, is the only acceptable decision. C. Okay. A. a is correct. A, a yes or a no. Yeah, you know, I remember a dialogue a while back said, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, if, if you say yes, that'll be great. If you say no, well, that's okay, too. But if you say maybe, oh, maybe, maybe's just kill me. Because I don't know what to do with a maybe, right? right? Yeah. So I'd rather have a flat-out no now than a, a maybe that will never materialize, mm -hmm. you know? And, um, you know, oftentimes you'll get enough to handle the objection from that. Now, there are two facts, and I put them at the top of your page with a couple of blanks in them. Well, let's see if you can fill in the blanks. When it just that we have underneath style or objection? Can't What's that? This business is a busy real estate agent without running into a style or an objection. That is correct. Yeah. That is correct. So fill it with those. That's the answer. <laughs> style. How do you spell that? You're style. Yeah. Like a, yeah, like <laughs> is there an, an H? And no. for those watching on uh, on video, I'll give you the answer. You can't live in this business on a busy as a busy real estate agent without running into a stall or an objection at least several times during the course of the day. And that's why I thought this was the most important one for us to cover right out of the starting gate because it's the I want to think it over, as I mentioned in fact number two, your inability to turn that stall or an objection into a commission is going to cost you more money than any one thing in this entire business. <laughs> you know, and you've heard me say this before, I've heard agents literally tell buyers or sellers to think it over and it is the kiss of death you know in other words what happens is when that time comes when you ring the doorbell smile pay him a compliment take him to the kitchen table break the ice ask him a bunch of questions get up and look at the house come back to the table talk about all the reasons why you like you and the company why so many people hired you and your company and then go to the net sheet and then go talk about you know price and terms and conditions and go over all the paperwork and by the time you get to the end of that and you're ready to have them sign that paperwork and that tension is there that closing tension is there right sometimes the agent chokes and says well uh, why don't you folks think it over and you leave and the customers thinking what the heck just happened uh, did they not want our listing we're confused we don't understand you know or when the agent says well so what do you think you know, giving them an option to think it over, they'll take that option every time. <laughs> so don't give them that option. It's, it could be as simple as that. End of seminar. Okay, thanks. Let's go. Right? <laughs> so don't give them the option. The definition of a stall. I want you to please write this down. The definition of a stall. A definition of a stall is what the prospect says to hide what they feel they should. Uh, the, it's, the definition of a stall is what the prospect says to hide why they feel they should not make a decision. Okay, I'll repeat that. The definition of a stall is what the prospect says to hide why they feel they should not make a decision. So when they say to you, um, you know, we want to think it over. Esther, thanks for the great presentation. You know, you did, you did a great job. Um, we're just going to think this over and we'll get back to you. What do they have? Yeah, they have an unanswered question, right? They, there's something that's preventing them from making a decision, and they're going to try to figure it out without you. You follow me? Now, sometimes they tell you in different ways that they want to think it over. For instance, some people say, you know, uh, well, we want we, we make it a policy that we like to pray on it. Let's 
pray. You know, so let's pray. Right? <laughs> uh, I went to a seminar oh, once with, uh, <laughs> with uh, <laughs> right? and uh, and Floyd actually uh, tells the story, uh, but he but he also recommends that you never do this. Okay, oh. so I'm going to tell you what it is, but and and uh, Floyd actually did this on a presentation, that he, but he also cautions everyone to not do this. But he said. Um, he went to a couple's house one time, and they said, you know, well, Floyd, you know, we really want to pray on it. And uh, Floyd said, well, I can certainly appreciate that. I understand that you'd want to pray on it, and, and I, you know, of course, I believe in God as well. And he said, but let me ask you a question. Who do you think sent me here? <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> so, so he says, you might not want to use that, but, you know, let's throw it out there. <laughs> Some of you are thinking, I'm using that one. <laughs> Sometimes they say, John, you know, uh, it's always been our policy to wait 48 hours before we sign anything. Um, and sometimes these sellers, they go to what I call seller training school, okay? And they say, geez, you know, uh, uh, and, and, and they use techniques. Like, for instance, they, they're, actually, Mark, they're actually using my name, too. You know, like they teach you in sales school, you know, use the person's name. They say, they say John, you know, um, we just want to think it over for, uh, for 48 hours. After all, John, they're using my name, right? It's only two days, isn't it? Right? Like they went to sales school, you know, and it's hard. And I'm sitting there going, yeah, it's okay, sure, you know. And they're saying, and, and uh, because it's hard to say no to an isn't it, isn't it? Yeah, right. see, you guys just said yes to an isn't it, right? <laughs> and, you know, today's Thursday, John, and we're going to let you know on Saturday, um, we could call you at 2 or would 4 be better? Right? <laughs> and I'm thinking, oh, four is good. Sure, you call me at four o'clock. That's fine. And, uh, and I'm leaving thinking they're going to think it over, right? And the, the sad truth of it is, gang, is that they're not thinking it over, you know? To possibly think in your mind, and in my mind, because I did this too as an agent when I was starting out, is that I literally, you know, I, if I really thought it through, I thought, you know, yeah, they're not actually going to... When I leave, they're not going to sit at the kitchen table and look at each other and go, mm. for 48 hours? They're going to go, mm. think about what they're saying, gang. It doesn't make any sense, does it? Right? So, uh, you know, Floyd also tells a story, Floyd Wickman tells a story where, you know, it took him four years, four years before it finally dawned on him that when a customer said they want to think it over, that they're not sitting around thinking it over, and they're actually lying to him <laughs> when they say they want to think it over. And they're not doing it maliciously. Follow me? They're not doing it on purpose, not doing it to hurt you in any way. It's just what they typically naturally do. It's what you might even naturally do when you want to think it over, right? You want some time. When you have some unanswered questions, mm -hmm. you, say, you often say, so I want to think about this. I, I would think even over. use the word fear. Yeah, absolutely fear. Absolutely. We're going to talk about that, actually. Yeah. A very good point. Um, as a matter of fact, if you look at the next line item down, uh, it says, if I leave, they're going to talk about what I should have found out about while we were together. Would you all please read that together with me? You ready? Go. <laughs> if I leave, they're going to talk about what I should have found out about while we were together. I purposefully didn't want you to write it for that. I wanted you to say that together with me as I was preparing these notes. I thought that it's just good for you to kind of internalize that thought that that's, that's what we need to do, okay? We need to find out while we're there because that is a process of helping. And remember, sales is helping somebody, uh, convincing somebody, using techniques um, to get somebody to do something that they're going to thank you for later on. Well, see, if you know, if your listing presentation, your marketing presentation, everything you're doing to sell a home, if you know that your sincerity and your heart is in the right place to help these people better than any agent out there in the, in the, in the marketplace, and you're going to work harder for them to get their home sold for the most amount of money than any agent in the marketplace, then you have that conviction that you are going to do everything you can to get them to list with you. And so sometimes you need to push. It takes a little fortitude. But it's easier to do that when you know that you're, you're, what you're doing for them is better than what anybody else can do for them. Okay? 
So that will also give you the confidence to go forward, not just knowing the words, but making sure you can back it up as well. Now, uh, the real secret to dealing with a stall is to find out... Now, good question. Why? Why? Well, it begins with a W. What? Well, why? What? Exactly. To find out what. Find out what. <laughs> okay? How do you find out the what? Well, sometimes it's easy as asking uh, uh, in the next... What do you need to think about? What is it you need to think about? What is it you need to think about? Sometimes it's that easy. So if, if I'm talking to Andre and his wife and I say, all you need to do now is simply approve this form and I'll get the sign in the yard in a few days because I asked him if he had any questions and he said no. And, uh, but sometimes when I walk into a, a store and a salesperson comes up to me and says, do you need any help or can I help you? I say no, but I really do need help. But he kind of caught me off guard and I want some time to kind of like get acclimated and then, you know, I just walk in the door, you know, give me, give me a chance. And so I instinctively said no. And so when I said to Andre and his wife, do you have any questions? And they instinctively said no. And then I asked them to approve the form. And all of a sudden, that fear took place. And these unanswered questions popped in their head. And that's when they said, I want to what? Think it over. I want to think it over, right? And so if I just simply say, well, Andre, if you don't mind me asking, what is it that you need to think about? And notice the way I said that. Andre, what is it that you need to, to think about? I'm just not sure. I just need to, to sleep on it. Yeah. Okay. Well, that, now that's good. But now feel this. Some people say it. They take the words and then they come back to the office and say, John, that doesn't work because they said it like this. What is it that you need to think about? <laughs> you know, same words, but said in a different way. You might think it came from, uh, you know, a different planet because it's not. It's not in line with what. Can you put him on the defensive? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like, and could, so, could you share with me what you need to think about? Yeah, that's exactly. Great. It's nice. Now, now the key is, like I started earlier with the joke, it's not just important what you say, but what? How you say, How you say it. it. Absolutely. So that's a minor point that I want to bring up today. Now, now uh, you could say that. However, uh, experience has proven to us that in most cases you need a psychologically sound, history-proven techniques. Yes. And, you know, the reason why I choose uh, a lot of Floyd Whitman's teachings to share with all of you is that it works. You know, uh, Floyd was dubbed the nickname at a seminar one time that he attended as the Duke of Dialogue. <laughs> and, uh, and the reason is, is that if there's one thing Floyd does for the real estate industry is he brings the words to every situation you could possibly need to you so that you can handle those objections. Remember the video you saw earlier this morning when he talked about handling the objections, right? And having the words and having the canned presentation, there are a certain number of objections that you're going to get. And the I want to think it over has got to be one of the most popular ones. <laughs> and it's preventing you, it's keeping you between you and your commission. It's keeping them between the seller and their goals, the buyer and their goals, because they have unanswered questions. So remember, if there's any one thing that I want to impress upon you today, is that when you hear and I want to think it over, you have one job and one job to do, and that job is to find out the what. what. You got it. Okay, gang? Otherwise, you can't help them. So, what Floyd did is he put together a three-step process. Okay? And it's a three-step process because if step one doesn't work, you go to step two. And if step two doesn't work, you go to step three. Okay? So in step one, uh, he calls it the what is it, is it? And uh, I love this one. It's great. It says, well, that's no problem, Mr. and Mrs. Dio Giovanni. I certainly wouldn't want you to do anything that you would feel uncomfortable with. But just out of curiosity, exactly what is it? Is it the price? And if they say to you, well, no, the price is fine. You know, it, it was good. I always want you to get a confirmation. So you, in other words, the price we came up with is okay for you. Okay, and I even wrote that down for you so you didn't have to write it down. Mm -hmm. Okay? Um, well, let me ask you this then. Is it perhaps uh, my services or, or my company? I say, no, it's, you know, you're fine. You know, we like everything you're doing and we like your company. I mean, that's why we called you. Well, could it be fair? In other words, you're not confident that everything will go as I said it will go. Could it be that one? And they're like, well, I don't know. Well, as long as we're together, which one of these three things is it? Because it's usually one of these three things. 
and sometimes they'll tell you. Sometimes they won't tell you. Sometimes they'll say, well, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, we, we just want to think it over, that's all. Right? They might say that. So you need to go to step one. Yeah. Step two. Step two is, is it uh, step two, if, if that doesn't work, go to what uh, Floyd calls the choice of three. Okay? And the choice of three rules, that's no problem. And in fact, the more I think about it, you shouldn't decide unless you're sure of three things. May I explain what they are? Yeah, yes. yes. Okay, ahead, good. <laughs> First, we have to agree on the price. Second, you have to be okay with me and my company. And third, you have to feel confident enough that if you do decide to go ahead and list with me, that everything will go ahead as if I said it would. So I wouldn't want you to decide until all three of these things are in place. Does that make sense? Yes. And they say, yes, of course it does. As long as we're together, which is it? And they may say, well, it's none of those things, John. It's actually the fact that you want to put a sign in our yard, and our, we don't want our neighbors to know our home is for sale. And the last agent we talked with said that we didn't have to put a sign in our yard, and you were really <laughs> focusing a lot on the sign thing, and so we just want to think it over. But now, gang, now you have an objection so to handle. And, and you can say, you know, use the objection dialogue for the, you know, I don't want a sign in my yard. You know, and you can go to the visual charts that I gave you in earlier sessions that show where buyers come from, and shows that 15% of buyers, even in a large, uh, even though people uh, are going to the internet instead of uh, print advertising now, right, King? Even though they're doing that a lot more now than they were before, then um, uh, there's still 15% of the buyers are coming from signs. So we don't want to, you know, leave those people out. Uh, in fact, you know, some agents would tell you that it's okay not to put a sign in the yard just so that they can get your listing. You know, it's not always easy to insist that you do certain things that you don't want to do. It's one of the hardest things that I can, I can recommend because it's, keep in mind, it's easier for me to, to agree with you about all of your objections than it is, and, and to just take your listing. But that we've learned in real estate that that only leads to letting you down and you're making a decision that you and I might both regret later on because the home doesn't sell because we haven't marketed it properly. So I'm going to make the suggestion that you do, in fact, put the sign in the yard. And the reason being is that if we eliminate 15% of the chance of you getting your home, of attracting a buyer to your property, your home may never sell. And because I was a weak agent and I said yes to that, and I didn't help you meet your goals, and that's what I want to do. Does that make sense? You know, so there's now you have an objection to heal. If I didn't know that that was the objection, I couldn't have handled it. I would have left. They would have hired the agent who what? Yeah. Who was weak, right? <laughs> who didn't get the home sold. And then I try to justify saying, well, I'll be the second agent, or I'll be the third agent, and you're not, right? <laughs> you're just that agent that didn't know what the real objections were and you didn't find out why they want to think it over. Okay, gang? Really important. Now, yes, Roberta. I think I, I've told you this before, but it sometimes works about the sign objection. Mm -hmm. um, I, ha I have said, and it worked, I said that, that would be like telling your accountant he can't okay. use the calculator. Oh, I like that. <laughs> you guys come up with some really great things. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. If it works for you. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's a tool that they need to do their job, and I like that. That's a good analogy. You know, so they need that tool to do their job. You wouldn't take that away from him. You know, he might not do as good a job for you. Might get you in legal trouble with the IRS, you know, all these problems, right? So, uh, so it's important to move forward with that. That's great. Thank you for sharing that. That's a good one. Now, if that doesn't work and they say, well, you know what, we, really, we, we just prefer to, you know, sleep on it. We want to think it over. Well, that's okay. Now, you use uh, emotion instead of logic. When logic doesn't work, go to emotion. When emotion, emotion doesn't work, go to what? Logic. logic, right? So then you just simply say, well, that's okay, I understand. And then you start doing what? Start packing up all your stuff as if you're leaving, right? You know, you, know, you ever watch Columbo? Yeah. And, and he does one of these, and he said, oh, okay, well, I'll, I'll see you later. And he leaves, and then he comes over and says, Oh, oh, by the way, I was just curious, how did your fingerprints, right. how was it that they did get on that candlestick? You know, I, I was just wondering. 
You know, just when their guard was let down and they felt like, ha ha, I faked them out, that stupid detective, right? And then he turns around and he gets them, and they're like, oh, right? <laughs> so do a little Columbo on them and start packing up as if you're ready to leave. And then you just simply turn around and say, can I just ask you one question? You know, if I ever had a customer that I felt a rapport with, it's you folks. And I had a feeling that you felt the same way, am I right? Yet something is preventing you from saying yes. For, uh, because of our rapport, I would almost rather have a flat out no now than to have a, ma a maybe that would never materialize. So let me ask you this, if you were to say no, what would your reason be? Yeah, woo, you guys like that one? It's good, huh? Um, now, uh, the, the last point on this page is, uh, when, you wanna, when you hear that I want to think it over, you have one job and one job only, and that is to find out the what. The what, what, right? See, I gave you the answer when I said that. Do you like that little yeah. the one there? Okay, good. So now we're going to have some fun. You ready? Yep. What we're going to do is we're going to um, remove... Um, we're going to ask you to take your chairs and line them against the wall facing each other, almost like a, like a circle. So if you three ladies would just turn your chairs around and face this way. Um, Becky, that's great. You can just stay right there. And those of you watching this on the video, if you would just role play with each other and or just watch the video because we're going to do something a little fun with the camera. So um, if you would back up a little more. Yep, back up a little more over here. chairs with you? Yeah. Slide that rolling one here. I've done this before. It's kind of fun. <laughs> like musical chairs? Yeah, like musical chairs. <laughs> okay. All right. And, uh, all right. <laughs> this is good. All right. Oh, God, we all have to undress now. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> That's the next class. That's okay. All right. And so what I'm going to do is we're going to, uh, I'm going to, uh, we're going to go around the room and we're going to role play around up to, um, up to eight people. And then we're going to change the dialogue, okay? So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we're going to change the dialogue to the second one and go eight people. And then we're going to change the dialogue to the third dialogue and go eight people around. Now here's what's great about this technique. You're going to hear it how many times? And you, if you're fortunate enough, you'll even get to say it out loud. Okay? And uh, by the time we're done with this, it'll, it'll go rather quickly, um, you will uh, have internalized this ten times greater than if I just stood up in front of the class and read it to you. Would you agree? So it's a little work. We'll have a little fun with it. And, um, and we'll get started. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Um, I'm going to take down the camera and, uh, and videotape you as you're role-playing with each other, okay? So you get to feel what it's like to be on camera, right? Yeah, I got it. Spit curl. Right. Okay, so you're live. Go right ahead and read it to the person, to uh, Louise next to you. Well, that's no problem, Mrs. Louise. I, I, I certainly wouldn't want you to do anything that you would be uncomfortable with. Just out of curiosity, exactly what is it? Is it the price? No, I think you did okay with the price. So, in other words, the price you came up with is acceptable? I think so. Okay, is it perhaps my services or me? No, you, you seem like a really competent agent. I think we'll be fine. Okay, well, that's, that's good to hear. Could it possibly be fear? In other words, you're not confident that everything will go as I said it would? Well, I've never been through this process before, so yeah, I guess I'm a little nervous about how it's going to go. Okay, okay, as long as we're together, that's that's what it is. It, it's, the, it's the fear of the uncertainty. 
Okay, that's good. And I know we can keep going deeper into this and, and into this dialogue and all this, but we're just going to use what I call, uh, and I've explained to you before, is called positive role play. So positive role play means that you just simply, you know, go along with it, and then so that we can just pro we're just we just want to practice the words. Uh, rather than actually handling any real objections at the end of this, because the real objections that you're going to get after you find out what is it, is it, I'm going to teach you how to handle those in other classes, okay? okay? So I won't, I won't leave you hanging with that. And, and um, so if you would, I'll just read along as Louise uh, reads to Roberta. Okay. Well, that's no problem, Roberta. I certainly wouldn't want you to do anything you'd be uncomfortable with. Just out of curiosity, exactly what is it? Is it the price? No. <laughs> so in other words, the price we came up with is acceptable? More or less. Is it perhaps my services or me? No. Could it be fear? In other words, you're not confident that everything will go as I said? Possibly that. As long as we're together, which one of these is it? I guess I'd say number three. Yeah. Okay, good. Great job, both of you. Excellent. Okay. It's Linda's turn to be the buyer and or seller, or the seller in this case. And Roberta's the agent. Well, that's no problem, uh, Linda. I certainly wouldn't want you to do anything that you'd be uncomfortable with. But just out of curiosity, what, what is it? Is it the price that I came up with? No. Um, how about the services or me? No. Could it be fear? In other words, you're not confident that everything will go as I said? Possibly. Okay, then, as long as we're together, it's number three. Yeah. Okay, good. Excellent. Next. Well, that's no problem, Judy. I certainly wouldn't want you to do anything that you would be uncomfortable with. Just out of curiosity, exactly what is it? Is it the price? I'm not really sure. So in other words, the price we came up with is acceptable? I guess it's all right, thinking about it a little bit. Is it perhaps my services or me? No, oh, I'm really happy with you. Could it be fear? In other words, you're not confident that everything will go as I said? <clears throat> yeah, to tell you the truth, I am kind of scared about the whole process. As long as we are together, which one of it? Oh, it's number three. <laughs> so, yeah. That's why I like so you so much because you figured yeah. it out. Why don't, why don't we do this? Is um, when you're role playing back and you're the person, um, don't tell them which one of the three it is. In other words, because it works, then you can say the last sentence and it kind of fits together. Right. So almost as if you're not waiting. When you're role playing this, almost really, you almost don't want to wait for the answer. You want to give them all three and then ask them, okay, well, out of out of these three, which one is it? Since right. we're both here, okay and. You're on. All right. <laughs> well, that's no problem, Linda. I certainly wouldn't want you to do anything. No, Becky. Becky. Oh, I'm doing Beck's style. That's all right. Okay, well, that's no problem, Becky. Well, that's no problem, Becky. I certainly wouldn't want you to do anything that you would be uncomfortable with. Just out of curiosity, exactly what is it? Is it the price? No. So, in other words, the price we came up with is acceptable? Yes. Judy. Is it perhaps my services or me? No. Well, that's good. That makes me feel good. Could it be fear? In other words, you're not confident that everything will go as I said? Which one is it? As long as we're together, try to tell me, and then I can help you. That's good. That's good. Yeah, yeah, that's the way we want to hear it. Great job. Okay, good. Okay. It's the Becky and Mark show. Yes. Here we go. Well, that's no problem, Mark. I certainly wouldn't want you to do anything that you would be uncomfortable with. Just out of curiosity, exactly what is it? Is it the price? I don't know. So in other words, the price we came up with is acceptable to you? I'm not sure. <laughs> is it perhaps my services or me? No, that you know I like you. Yeah. Could it be fear? In other words, you're not confident that everything will go as I said? A little bit, that it won't sell at that price. As long as we're together, Mark, could you identify which one of these it is for you? A little bit of the three of them, I think. <laughs> Good. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Excellent. Great job, both of you. I go to her? Yes. Um, 
Okay, um, now we're going to the uh, step two, right, gang? So we're going to use the second dialogue. Okay. Excuse my back. I'm that's sorry. Well, Jack, that's no problem then. In fact, the more I think about it, you shouldn't decide unless you're sure of three things. May I explain them to you? Certainly. First, you have to agree with the price. Second, you have to be okay with my company and me. Third, you have to feel confident enough that if you do decide to go ahead and list with me, that everything will go ahead as I said it would. So I wouldn't want you to decide until all three of these things are in place. Does that make sense? Uh, yes, it does. As long as we're together, which one is it? Uh, I don't know. I still want to think it over. All right. He's, he's forcing you to step number three, but that's okay. I know. Okay. John and Esther. Oh, Esther, that's no problem. In fact, the more I think about, about it, you should... You shouldn't decide unless you're sure of three things. May I explain them to you? Sure. First, you have to agree with the price. Second, you have to be okay with my company and me. Mm -hmm. Third, you have to feel confident enough that if you do decide to go ahead and list with me, that everything will go as I said it would. Okay. So I wouldn't want you to decide until all three, all three of these things are in place. Does that make sense? Kind of. As long as we're together, which one is it? I think it's the price. The yeah. price. There you oh, go. You now you've got that. your objection, right? <laughs> and then you handle the price well, objection. Well, you said no problem. No, yeah, right. no, no, no. <laughs> that's true. <true. laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> okay. um, well, that's no problem then. In fact, the more I think about it, you shouldn't decide unless you're sure of three things. May I explain them to you? Yes. First, you have to agree with the price. Do you? Yes. Second, you have to be okay with my company and me. Of course. Third, you have to feel confident enough that if you decide to go ahead and list with me, that everything will go ahead as I said it would. I'm sure it will. So I wouldn't want you to decide until all three things are in place. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. As long as we are together, which... Which objections are you having? Not sure I think you want to pray over it. Well, then let's okay. sit and pray together. Yeah, okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, <easy. laughs> All right good. <laughs> okay, and uh, Andre, if you wouldn't mind just sitting next to Diane real quick, and then I'll, that way I can get you both. Well, that's no problem. Then, in fact, the more I think about about it, you should just, oh, I'm sorry. In fact, the more I think, about it, you shouldn't decide unless you're sure of three things. May I explain them to you? Of course. First, you have to agree with the price. Okay. Second, you have to be okay with me and my company. Oh, I'm very okay with you and your company. Nice. Third, uh, you have to feel confident enough that if you do decide to go ahead and list with me, then everything will go ahead as, as we planned. So, uh, I wouldn't want you to decide until all these three things are in place. Does it make sense? Yeah, absolutely. So as long as we are together, which one is it? I, I, I think it's I'm just not confident that the host will sell. Okay. Good. All right. Great job, guys. 
Well, Louise, that's no problem then. In fact, the more I think about it, you shouldn't decide unless you're sure of three things. May I explain them to you? Yes. First, you have to agree with the price. Okay. Second, you have to be okay with my company and with me. Okay. Third, you have to feel confident enough that if you do decide to list with me, that everything will go as I said it would. So I wouldn't want you to decide until all three of these things are in place. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Okay, as long as we're together, which do you think it is? I think I just, you know, need to go forward. Yeah. <laughs> A little bit of fear. Okay, so let's break through that fear. Okay. <laughs> Get it signed. <laughs> All right, good job. <laughs> <laughs> and you can approve these forms. <laughs> yes. All yes. right, great job. Okay, next. Well, that's no problem then. In fact, the more I think about it, you shouldn't decide unless you're sure of three things. May I explain them to you? Sure. First, you have to agree with the price. Second, you have to be okay with me and my company. Third, you have to feel confident enough that if you do decide to go ahead and list with me, that everything will go ahead as I said it would. So, I wouldn't want you to decide until all these three things are in place. Does that make sense? As long as we're together, which one is it? Oh, I don't know. I think it might be the company. <laughs> <laughs> I hear your foldings. <laughs> quite, quite the the okay, quickly, next. <laughs> quickly, right. <laughs> <laughs> Change that subject. Well, that's no problem. Then. In fact, the more I think about it, you shouldn't decide unless you're sure of three things. May I explain them to you? Yes. Um, first, you have to agree with the price. Second, you need to be okay with my company and with me. Third, you have to feel confident enough that if you do decide to go ahead and list with me, that everything will go as I said it would. So I wouldn't want you to decide until all three of these things are in place. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So as long as we're together, then which of those things is it? I think it's just being a little bit more confident. Good. All right, great job. Next. Well, that's no problem then. In fact, the more I think about it, you Walk shouldn't around. decide unless you're sure of three things. May I explain them to you? Absolutely. First, you have to agree with the price. Okay. Second, you have to be okay with my company and me. Third, you have to feel confident enough that if you do decide to go ahead and list with me, that everything will go ahead as I said it would. So I wouldn't want you to decide until all three, three things are in place. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. I'm still concerned about the price a little bit, though. Good. As long as we are together. Okay. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So let's go to step three now. And we'll do uh, eight turns with step three. Should I start yeah. this if it doesn't work? Yes. If you wouldn't mind just... Shifting that's one, okay. that'd be great. Shall I go here? Sure. Okay. Yeah, that'd be perfect. Thank you. I guess I'll go back to you. Okay, that's okay. I understand. Can I just ask you one question? Yes. You know, if ever I had a customer that I felt a rapport with, it's you. Oh. And I had a feeling that you're feeling the same way. Am I right? Yes. Good. Yet something is preventing you from saying yes. Because of our rapport, I would almost rather have a flat out no now than have a maybe that is never going to materialize. So let me ask you this. If you were to say no, what would be your reason? Yes, I'm not going to say no. I'm yeah. so glad <laughs> that I continue working with you. That was really good. Wow, that's great. That's positive role play. That's good. Okay, next. Great job, both of you. That's um, great. How do I? Well, that's okay, I understand. Now, can I just ask you one question? Sure. You know, if I ever had a customer that I felt a rapport with, it's you folks. And I had a feeling that you felt the same way about me. Am I right? Yeah, I think so. And yet, something is preventing you from saying yes. Because of our rapport, I would almost rather that you have a flat-out no now than a maybe, which is never, never a, good, a good answer. So let me ask you this. If you were to say no, what would be your reason for saying no? 
Uh, my reason to say no? Yes. I've changed my mind. Oh, you don't want uh, to sell your no, house? No, I'm going to stay here. Oh, oh okay. Dear, dear, <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All right. Great job. <laughs> okay, next. Don't do the same thing to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, that's okay. I understand. Can I ask you just one question? Sure. You know, if I ever had a customer that I felt rapport with, it is you. And I had a feeling that you had the same rapport with me. Am I right? Sure. Yet something's preventing you from saying yes. Because of our rapport, I would almost rather have an outright no and then have a maybe that is never going to materialize. So let me ask you this. If you were to say no, what would be your reason? Well, I've decided to say yes, so give me your pen. Okay. <laughs> All right. There you go. All right. Good job. <laughs> That's okay, Jack. I understand. Can I just ask you one question? You know, if I ever had a customer that I felt a rapport with, it's you, and I had a feeling that you felt the same way, am I right? Yeah. Yet something is preventing you from saying yes. Because of our rapport, I would much rather have a flat out no now than have a yes, maybe, that will never go into materialize. So let me ask you this. If you were to say no, what would be your reason? Uh, I have to uh, talk to my mother. <laughs> there you go. All right. <laughs> That's okay. I understand that, sir. Can I ask you just one question? Sure. You know, if I ever had a customer that I felt a rapport with, it's you and your husband. I had a feeling you had the same, you have, you feel the same. Am I right? Yeah. Yet something is preventing you from saying yes. Uh, because of our rapport, I would almost rather have a flat out no now. Really? Yeah, then maybe, then a maybe that is never going to materialize. So let me ask you uh, this. If you were to say no, what would your reason be? Because you asked me to say it. <laughs> oh, that's no problem. We can straighten this mess yeah. out. Yeah. <laughs> All right, good job, guys. <laughs> Andre, that's okay. I, I understand. Um, can I just ask you one more question? Yeah, go ahead. You know, if I ha ever had a customer that I felt a rapport with, it's you folks, you and your wife, and I had a feeling that you felt the same way. Am I right? Yeah, I like you too. Yet something is preventing you from saying yes. Because of our rapport, I would almost rather have a flat out no now than have a maybe that is never going to materialize. So let me ask you this. If you were to say no, what would be your reason? No, I think I say yes. Way to go. I thought you were going over to kiss him. <laughs> that too, if it works. Yeah. It's, that, it's that Tom Selleck mustache he has. Is that why he moved away? Yeah. <laughs> That's okay, I understand. Can I just ask you one question? Sure, okay. You know, if I ever had a customer that I fell a rapport with, it's you, and I had a feeling you felt the same way about me. Am I right? Oh, yes, that's true. Yet something is preventing you from saying yes. Because of our rapport, I would almost rather have a flat out no than have a maybe that is never going to materialize. So let me ask you this. If you were to say no, what would be the reason? The reason for saying no would be that sign in the yard. I just don't like that sign in my lawn. It just messes up my turf. That's no okay. problem. No problem. All right, good job, guys. Is that eight, or do we need one more? No, Did eight enough. people go? That's good. That's All right, good. Yeah. Okay, gang, I'm going to ask you to move your chairs back into a position. Relax. I'm going to have a drink before I come next time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Thank you all for uh, role playing and having a good time. And thank you. Uh, I, I want I want you to give yourselves a hand because you stayed in the room. Great job. <laughs> And you didn't run out, you know, it was, oh my goodness, role play. Now, how many of you feel, by a show of hands, how many of you feel a little more confident today handling the I want to think it over objection? All of you, that's great. And, and, and I can tell you it's largely because you took the time to work that out, to hear it and read it eight times and or say it once. You know, there's something about spaced repetition over and over and over again, you know, subjecting your brain and your, and your voice and your eyes to those dialogues over and over and over again that I can, I can guarantee you that if I read it to you and you left, the odds of every single person in this room reading it and, and practicing it eight times today would probably be what? Zero. Zero to none? Okay, well that's, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, whatever the number is, it is. But, um, but that also will help you to uh, gather the skills that you need to use to go forward. And you can, you, what's going to happen, gang, is that you're going to take some of these dialogues and you're going to start intertwining them with other objections and you're going to put two of them together and you're going to start coming up with your own dialogues and words that are a compilation of all the things that you're learning. It, it'll just come naturally. It'll, it'll come around. Uh, so quick on the last page, next week uh, on Friday um, you will see John Miller at the listening table with two of our very own sales associates. It's Lauren Duquette and Bill Fiore. Uh, this is a realistic role play session. Uh, I'm going to role play and then I'm going to periodically uh, stop and explain what it is that I'm doing and why I'm doing it in, in the process. Okay, gang? You really don't want to miss this. This came as a result of you asking me, you know, we want to see, like, okay, can you show it to us? Now that you've shown right. us how to get the prospect, qualify the prospect, you get him to the table, you've told us what to say when we get to the table, can we actually see it happening? You're going to be able to do that next Friday. Uh, you might be thinking, big deal. <laughs> Are you going to have visuals, too? Well, uh, All your visuals? I'll, I'll have some visuals, yes, yes. Uh, now, gang, the other thing I want to impress upon you, the techniques that I'm going to be sharing with you um, helped me to list and sell 60 homes in a buyer's market that was a much more difficult buyer's market that we're in right now. I was also, able, I didn't write this in here, but I was also able to get on average a 7% fee for service because of the techniques and the tools and what I was using and how I was using it. Um, now, make sure you show up for the session, gang. Please don't underestimate this. And there's, there's some fine print, and I don't, I'm going to share with you some information. I'm going to ask you to personally don't. Don't let this information leave this room, okay? Uh, here's the deal. Uh, this, this, is, uh, this session is, is already on videotape, and we're going to play this session here on this, on this TV. I'm not going to set up a table and sit in the room, and you're going to hear me, like, you're gonna hear me on, on the video, okay? Uh, I'm going to be literally uh, five and a half hours north in Maine uh, camping for the weekend. I'm leaving on Friday morning, and I'll be gone uh, Saturday and Sunday. So, um, so that's going to take my place, but it's something that everybody wants, everybody's been wanting to see, and it's on there. Here's what you're going to have an opportunity to do. After the video is over, okay, you're going to have an opportunity, and, and what I'm going to ask uh, one of you to conduct this, is that you're going to have an opportunity to share with each other all the things that you liked about it that you're going to start doing, and all the things that you didn't like about it, which is going to be real easy to do because I'm not going to be here, um, and, and all the things that you thought that, you know, the reasons why you don't like them, and really have some controversy and, and some really healthy discussions about things, and you could even add things that, you know, I like what John said about that, but I would also add this, you know, or I would never do that because, you know, this has been my experience, you know, so we'll have a, a healthy interaction and inter uh, changing of, uh, of ideas and sharing. My fear is that if I quit, that it's, it's, I'm going to play a video that most people might, might not show up. That's my fear. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I don't want to keep it a secret from you guys, but I also want to impress upon you that it's really, really important to see this, and I know for a fact you're going to learn some things. I also sense that you may have some questions afterwards as well. You may ask me to email you some things or send me some things. Or how did you set up those cards, and how did you do it, and all this other good stuff. Uh, Andre and I spent some time together yesterday, uh, and we set up his whole listing kit. And I'm ready, willing, and able to do that with any of you uh, at any time you're ready for it. You know, sometimes that, that old saying is that, the, you know, uh, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. You know, sometimes it's the other way around, too. <laughs> right? 
uh, when the teacher is ready, the student appears. So I'm happy to sit down and work with you uh, to help you put together your packet and also go through that flow and that process to get the listing presentation down so that you get the fee that you want, you get the price that you want, you're not going on appointments that are unqualified, you're getting your full fee for service, and you're getting the home sold, most importantly. And you're giving them the confidence in yourself. You see, if you have a good presentation, a close is extremely easy for you to do because you have that confidence going into it. It's when you don't have a good presentation, and when you know your presentation is weak, that you don't feel confident enough to close. So the key is going there prepared, bringing what with you? Everything, Everything. Everything with you. <laughs> and, and going in there with confidence and you'll make it happen. So, um, Another yes. thing was that you had told me, which kind of worked, um, is not to leave them with stuff. I made that mistake yes. once. I left them with too much stuff. So now they had everything. What do they need me for? Right. And they turned and went with someone else. You know what I mean? Doesn't so you keep the stuff until yeah. they've made a decision, and then I if they want to go with you, mm -hmm. fine, I'll share it with you. I'll leave it with you. Yeah. But I'm not leaving so it even with you that, now. So even that toolkit thing, just take it right take back. It yeah, take it back. Don't, don't leave really anything need with them. It. Because here's what's happening, gang. The reason why you're leaving yeah. stuff behind is that. Why did you leave things behind? What did they say to you to get you to leave things behind? They're going to think it over. We right. want to think it over. Right. right. And I screwed it up. <laughs> <laughs> it says yeah, it's it June 13th, then in two weeks. Oh. Yeah, that's two weeks. Oh, that's right. I thought it was a break. One week vacation. Or oh, I, I goofed it up. I apologize. It's June 6th. Uh, 6th. Next week. Yeah, I'm sorry, gang. Right. Okay. Well, you were thinking uh, you're on vacation, so that's fine. No, I, I, mis I copied and pasted that from another flyer that I did for the 13th. I want to ask something. Sure. All these courses, I think they're wonderful and all that, and I thought, oh, I know I'll be able to say this and that, but how do I get a listing? That's my problem. How do you I, get a listing? Oh, you mean get the video? Prospect. I don't even have it. I don't even have it. Ah, yes. I don't have anybody to you want tell to accept all you people. Right. I mean, I can't. <laughs> I can't yes. find, usually when we took a lot of desk duty, we'd get two or three yeah, people to, to come over. So yeah. we'd have that. We, we don't have that anymore. Yeah, we had so a, then uh, the, 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 what that, the people who had houses and they, lo they lost them, you know, so they went to one and two and three. You hate to go and call them and pick it up. You feel they couldn't sell it with her, they couldn't sell it with her. I don't even want to go after those. But that's yeah. the point we should. Sure. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that's the one we well, should. It's, it's hard, though. I agree with her. I mean, I, I myself, you know, yeah, it's a dry market. Them, it's a dry market, and it's it's very very difficult mm -hmm. to go out there. And, yeah, and, and the they, people say, look around, especially in Long Meadow. I mean, there's three signs there. There's two on this side. They're all around. It's flooded, and yeah. they're not moving. It's yep. a, it's a cycle. Well, I mean, it, it's like everything goes in cycles. But what's your answer to her? Mm -hmm. How do I? Uh, what do I do? Well, to, to you can do one of two things. You can get out of the business, <laughs> or you know, because that's what a lot of people are doing. Or you can prospect for the business, and that's and there is a session that we did, and I have the DVD. If any of you would like to see it again, it's in each of your offices. It's how to find listing prospects by phone, and uh, and getting to them. Um, you know, Andre had mentioned them yesterday. He said, you know, I, I want to prospect these expireds, but a lot of them are on the do not call list, or I can't find their phone number. And I told him, and I meant this sincerely, if I were an agent today, I would absolutely, positively, seven o'clock in the morning. Turn up all the expires, get ready, and get out, uh, go out on the door, and go to their door and knock on the door. Now, most of them aren't going to be home. So what I would do is I would take a sticky note in my business card, and I would use the sticky note to put my business card on the wall, okay, and on their door when they come in. And don't use their front door because they don't use their front door. Use the door that they come into, right? And put it on there. And on the sticky note, just simply write, I have some ideas as to why your home hasn't sold. Sorry I missed you. Please call. That's it. And I would do that because you know what? If the phone calls aren't working, and if you waiting for the business to come to you isn't working anymore, then you need to go out and get it. If you want to get it, it's there for you. Um, and guess how much competition you're going to have in doing that? Zero. Zero. And if they really do want to sell their home, they're going to think, "Wow, this person's working. Everyone else is giving up." Every yeah. time I call a realtor, they're like, oh, the sky is falling. This person's actually 
making something happen. When you do this, gang, you are going to shine. I mean, you're really, really going to stand out. Uh, it's hard not to. And if you go in the back door and there's two other people that have done the same thing, you see Coldwell and Ravis. Just rip theirs apart. Take those with you. Okay, that'll work. That's good. Yes? I have another idea in terms of, of what you say at the door. Uh, a friend of mine who's very successful in uh, in the building industry. Uh, said, Talk Kansas about Car I'm sorry, Kansas Carter says, I can help you. Okay, I will. And haven't got time now, call me, I can help you. Yeah. And then, yeah. you know, if they want help, they call. If right. they don't, they don't. They they don't. don't. Yeah. You and don't have to say much, and, you just have to be there. Yeah, and he doesn't waste yeah. time with them. Right. He doesn't right. waste time with anybody. Good. Even to call your old people, I've done that. The ones that you know, yeah. I just done, you know, I call on the phone. Hey, how's it going? How's it going? How's yeah. that? Do you know of anybody who is interested in buying or selling right now? And then you'll get some names that way too. I mean, I followed through. I didn't get anybody yet from it, but um, you they're, never know. There are just listed and just sold no, phone calls things. that you can be making to neighborhoods as well. Yes. I have had the experience because I've been prospecting the for sale by owners and. People that I do meet face to face say, you know, I really appreciate that you've taken the time to come to my door, and we have been thinking of listing, but we were working with X Y. I know I had that happen too. And I think we're going to call him. Okay, I don't know what to yeah. do. I'm like, well, okay. One of, our, one of our sessions that has come up very shortly. Good. It's how to handle the uh, the objection. Uh, we want to we want to use the other broker. Yeah. Okay, so. I'm going to show you how to get someone from our company. I don't want to, you know, what I did was I called him and I said, these people want to talk to you. Well, good. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you what I want to refer to you. Yeah, I have someone I want to refer to you. I guess I could have changed the language. See, I'm new. I don't know these things yet. Yeah, no, that's okay. Yeah. Any other questions, Dave? Yeah. Any other questions I can help you with about anything today? No, I'm not trying. I'm not going to be here next week. I've got a wedding. Okay. So when the can I watch that tape? The video's in your office right now. You can go to your office and watch it right now. It's oh, okay. It's L-5. It's titled Live Listing Presentation. Okay. And we're going to play it here. I think it's cool. Yeah, it'll be fun. Yeah, it'll be good. Are you going to park the left you to come here? <laughs> you can do both, right? <laughs> Remember, uh, repetition is the mother of learning. Yeah. Can, can, we, can I, are we finished with this? I just wanted to go back to what we were doing yesterday. Just a quick question. What was that? Uh, you know, putting people on the, um, on the uh, GMAC program. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely sure. Oh, All right, gang, we're gonna uh, we're gonna wrap it up. Have oh, a great week. When you can put the names instead of keeping them on, on the H three. Yeah, yeah, I want yeah. to learn that too. Okay. Uh, what I want to know. Oh yeah. Oh, I forgot to take it. Can I just ask?